So in case you didn't see my last video, what happened was, upon trying to land a colonisation can, as I'm now going to affectionately call them, on the Julian moon of Lathe, uh, a high gain antenna that I'd placed onto it melted during re-entry. That meant, of course, that I had pretty much zero control over the capsule itself, and thankfully, no one was hurt. However, there was a very, very high risk factor involved. A risk that could have been prevented if a communications network was in place. Now, I'm going to actually make a proper communications network, sort of in between, sort of Dresden Jewel, uh, a bit later down the line using normal satellites and what have you, and I'll probably film that and put that in a video. But for now, I'm just trying to test the waters a bit here with this unmanned mission to Juna. But this isn't just any other unmanned mission to Juna. I've done loads of those in the past. Oh no, this one is horrendously complicated for someone of my character, shall we say. Yes, long-term subscribers of this channel will know that I am by no means the most efficient Kerbal Space Program player out there. I like to do things by pure brute force. I like to strap more engines and just hope that sheer power and sheer massive amounts of Delta V and excess of everything will help me see through the mission. However, this is rather different for that. I'm not using any particular efficient engine, like an ion engine or whatever, but this is the first mission that I have ever done, at least in my most recent memory, that has involved me doing micromanagement. Oh my god, this is going to be interesting. So essentially what we have here is three spacecraft for the price of one. We're sending them all to Juna at the same time aboard the same rocket. We have two landers, one of which has a heat shield and is going to land on Juna as per. It's got a little science package and everything, a few parachutes, little communications array, and not much else basically. It's the same old story really basically. And then we have a second lander to do something that I actually have never done before in Kerbal Space Program, and that is to land on the moon of Ike. Now, I'm trying to plot my trajectory very, very carefully here, so that I pop into Juno's sphere of influence and basically hope that Ike is going to be there in order to try and pull us into orbit and therefore save some fuel. Um, so that way our third spacecraft, which is a relay antenna slash satellite slash whatever, um, can be deployed into high Juno orbit and can therefore control both the probes or at least give signal to both the probes and it means that we can transmit all the data back that they get as well as use it for future missions if we need to. So with this maneuver node I'm coming up on now, it's essentially going to put me onto a sort of semi-free return trajectory around Juno here. You can see we sort of slingshot around Ike and when we go around Ike, we're actually going to release the lander. That's going to burn itself into orbit and then deorbit, obviously. And then we'll continue on. We'll release the lander and then we'll boost the actual satellite back up into a high Juno orbit. And everything should be good, in theory. This is one of my missions. It's when has anything like that ever gone wrong, ever? Because here we've actually released ourselves from the transfer stage now. It's now up to the spacecraft itself to, to get itself ready to land on Ike. You can see we're just releasing the Ike probe, extending the landing legs and extending the antenna. And to be fair, coming up to this, I was fairly nervous. I didn't really know what Ike was going to be like. I, I've read about Ike before in on the wiki. I've seen missions to it. I really had no idea, though, what it was going to feel like to actually land on the body. I, from what I'd heard, it was similar to the moon, the moon, the moon, whatever. It was very, very similar to the actual moon in terms of landing, in terms of topography and everything. But I honestly didn't know. And to be honest, I was actually kind of surprised. As you can see here doing my suicide burn, well, it's just coming up now. I was actually very, very surprised. At, it's actually very, very easy to land on Ike. It's more akin to landing on Minmus, I'd say, than actually landing on the moon. Uh, I mean, the gravity is probably slightly higher, but I mean, <laughs> I really mistimed my burn here. This was a, uh, a very inefficient descent, but thankfully I'd packed more than enough fuel, so that really wasn't a problem at the end of the day. In fact, if you're just starting out in the Kerbal Space Program universe on your adventures in the Kerbal system, I would actually really recommend the Juna system, the Juna Ike system, should I say rather, as a good starting place when you're ready to venture out of Kerbin's gravi gravity well, because... It's sort of really easy to get here. I mean, Juno's a little different to land on, but then again, that's expected, obviously, because, well, it's another planet. But Ike is also very, very similar to the Moon and Minmus. It's sort of a mix of the two in terms of actually getting down to them and landing on them in terms of Delta V. It's 
quite fun actually. But here you can see we're just throttling ourselves down, bit of a bounce, bit of a hover, and we are down. There we go, that's a fantastic landing for this Ike lander, and another body to add to my collection. Now seeing as we've used Ike to actually slow ourselves down into Juno orbits using minimal fuel, we are now going to release our lander using our probe. We're going to lower our apoapsis using the probe's engine here into Juno's atmosphere, so that would mean we uh, release the probe once we've done this. So you can see here we're actually lowering it into the atmosphere. Below we're going to make it fairly deep so that we don't just skip off. And then what we're going to do is release the actual probe itself, switch back to the relay system here, get ourselves clear and then boost ourselves into a circular orbit around Juna here as you can see obviously avoiding any Ike encounters. So that means the probe is now free to orbit Juna. It's still got a bit of fuel left so I'll probably boost it into some kind of geostationary orbit or Juno stationary orbit whatever you want to call it um, at some point just so that it can uh, receive constant communications with these probes. And this is where weird stuff began to, began to happen because a lot of luck came into this mission. Firstly, the antenna, despite my best efforts, broke off this um, this little probe here um, when the re-entry heating started to, started to um, heat up a bit here. Um, thankfully, because I bought the relay, the probe was still able to communicate with the actual satellite in orbit, which meant that uh, this really wasn't a problem at the end of the day, although for a split second my heart did kind of stop when, yeah, that sort of broke off. But thankfully we still had signal, but it was okay. The second bit of luck, of course, was that eclipse that you saw in the intro. And I honestly completely forgot that this could happen around Juna. I mean, obviously it can happen. It's Ike goes in front of the sun every now and then, and obviously a, an eclipse will happen. It's just ha it happens no matter what. It blocks the light. But I was actually really surprised when I actually first saw the eclipse coming across, because I initially thought it was a really large sandstorm, just one that I'd never seen before on Juna. Some of the sandstorms that SVE does actually add into the game are spectacular, and in fact I think there was actually one going on at the time here. And you can see some of the dust, but I initially thought this was a huge sandstorm, so I thought, oh, this is going to be fantastic. So you can see here we're coming down, going to come down a little bit on rocket power, mostly on the uh, parachutes, but then I realised this is a bit dark to be a, um, a sandstorm. And then I realised, I thought it was a graphical glitch, but uh, it was a nice way to round off the mission. But yeah guys, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. I should have a Ghost Recon Wildlands video coming out within the next couple of weeks, fingers crossed. As well as Juno Horizon and KSP News. But until next time guys, peace out.